Right, we are at a secret location, filming. And look, we've got the car that Ineos didn't want me to have. Look, the Ineos Grenadier. So we have got the OG Defender. We've dug the 90 out. We have got the Ineos Grenadier. And we have got the Stig, the mighty Stig. And we are just going to talk a little bit about the Grenadier. So it's arrived. Someone who we know has got one of these. This is a proper delivery. This isn't a press car. This is a genuine punter that paid his money and apparently they are coming through but in a random order it doesn't seem to be depending on what spec you've ordered or when you're on the waiting list and they just sort of ring you up and your car's ready so if you're waiting for a Ineos Grenadier they are coming through so in this video we're going to talk about the background what was the original concept of the Ineos Grenadier have they kept to that have they where did it go from where they started to this now and then where does it sit between built on purpose and or what so we're gonna have a little look around so the story started back in about 2017 old Jimbo was sat in a pub with his mates and he said oh alas the mighty original defender is gonna die well what is there to replace the original bare bones I think were his words four by four and he said well let's just make one it's easy and it? it's just the chassis and some wheels and so he set about doing it but it took him a little bit longer and a few more dollars than I reckon he thought it was gonna. We did a review of the prototype. We put our name forward to go and look at it. Not as a company but just as me. Um, and they invited us, me, and George and I went down and we test drove one and we asked if we could film it and they said yeah no bother and now um, it broke down on the test drive but it was a prototype so we can forgive them that but they didn't want me to put the video of it breaking down up but they promised me i would have access to one but they never gave me access to one but anyway that's another story so right so old jimbo he had his idea and then they started designing it in 2018 they're originally gonna have the factory in wales and use british engineers but in the end they bought the smart car factory in Hambach in France, France-German border. They got a team of German engineers mainly to design the car. And this is what it is. And we're gonna have a look around it. So what we'll do is we'll start by looking at the engine, the gearbox, the transfer box, the axles, the brakes, the wheels, and then we'll go on to the body. And we'll, we'll see how bare bones is it compared to the OG and where does it differ to the new Defender? I'm not trying to compare them so um, and there's an interesting thing so a lot of people have said oh they've just copied the Defender but did the Defender just copy the Willys Jeep and and what in our lives whether it's a kettle or a toaster the one company copy or just evolve a design from someone else so so I don't want to get into the whole and I think Land Rover took a bit of hindrance and and there were some lawyers making lots of money out of both Ineos and Land Rover as lawyers do but back to the car the metal and stuff right so the engine in this car is a three litre a petrol engine six cylinders in line not a v6 straight six and you can get a choice of petrol or diesel both derived from BMW so you've got a German now obviously you've got fuel injection and mass airflow sensors and all the timing and sensors and all the wizardry and gadgets that make it meet modern emissions so you're already a long way from the bare bones diesel of the OG Defender and that's probably a good job for the planet so we're all quite happy with that but there are ECUs there's wiring looms there's connectors there's sensors and all that so don't think by buying this you are buying uh, bare bones like that because modern legislation and everything else pretty much rules that out right so there's the engine pretty much I would say now bear in mind the new Defender not ours but our new 90 is a three litre petrol engine six cylinder in line so there's quite a lot going on between these two where the engine's concerned and that one's on its own out there right I'm sorry sorry norma that one's normal right so then let's think okay so we've got an engine but it's that we've got a gearbox so this has got a zf eight speed automatic gearbox there is no manual version available again i might be talking rubbish so correct me if i'm wrong in the comments below ineos let me know so that's an eight-speed automatic gearbox. Now, interestingly, the Stig, this is an eight-speed ZF automatic gearbox with its ECUs and controllers and 
and all the other torque converting and all the other complexity. So we're already engine and gearbox in. We're quite modern car -y, not bare bones. That one, the OG, he's a manual gearbox, five speeds, I think. Oof. That one's already pretty much on its own. So after the gearbox, we got the transfer box. The transfer box on this one is the high-low ratio. You switch a switch on the dashboard and it moves some motors and whirs around. This one appears to be, you've got a lever that looks like it's more manual, as clearly on the old Defender you do. You get that manual one. The centre diff lock on this one is active. We've got centre diff lock on this. That's activated electronically, as I believe it is on this one. Certainly the front and rear diff. This one's got three locking diffs center front and rear this one's got one now you can upgrade i think to the rear locking diff i'm not sure if the new defender has the option of a front locking diff i don't know that much right after the transfer box we've then got onto the axle so it goes from the so the rear axle as we said on this one the front and rear axle have got locking electrically activated locking diffs which is an it's the rough pack isn't it so if you buy the rough pack which is supposed to mean you're going off-road and you get those as part of that upgrade package so they're optional extras but then we'll have a look underneath can we get under here ben we've got these massive axles that are made by some company that makes solid tractor axles and they're absolutely massive with the big case in and all that caper going on now obviously that's a lot more in line with the original defender this one is independent now there are big advantages for each one. Now, this one I like because we've got we've got much better ground clearance in the middle because we haven't got the big diff hanging down. Um, we've also got all sorts of other trickery in terms of off-road. But I think the solid axle, a lot of people go, oh, you need a solid axle. I don't quite get that, but it is more rugged. It is a solid axle. But the problem, the other problem you get with a solid axle is your unsprung weight goes up massively so when you're going over a bump you the the axle goes up and down and the body's got to tame it and you end up with the tail wagging the dog the axle starts shaking the body and that's where you start getting ride comfort and other things the other thing is we looked on the spec sheet before we came out this morning so we looked like we knew what we were knowing about and we look for the weight because i reckon this is a bit of a pie eater because those axles are going to weigh an absolute ton and then you've got the so this has got a separate ladder chassis where that one is a monocoque the body and the chassis is, is one combined thing so i reckon the weight of this with the separate chassis the body and the solid axles is going to be and it was that we had the height the length we had everything didn't we ben but we didn't have the weight so i reckon they don't want to body shame him and haven't put his weight which i can understand so right so we've gone through the axles then we get to the brakes so we have got four disc brakes one in each corner disc brake we like disc brakes that's all good they're good when you're going through water and everything and that is exactly the same as we've got on this defender and that defender so we found one thing we all do like a top chumps didn't we ben we found one thing where if you're playing top chumps they'd all be the same for disc brakes but handbrake oh this is this really gets everyone going so this one has got an electronic handbrake where it's got little motors on the rear calipers that wind in and push the little pads and that, I love it when you're going up a hill it can put it on and do all sorts of trickery this one oh come on let's have a look Ben people love this look at that this is a thing of delight for many people look at that an actual handbrake that pulls old school wires wires through a little mechanism and then on the back it pulls it so this has got a handbrake and a lot of you are going yeah I'll buy it just for the mechanics I don't I think the thing with handbrakes was they had that hybrid system on like the Disco 3 and the Range Rover Sport where you had a button that then went to a box that pulled some cogs and pulled some levers and it was kind of a mismatch of the sort of the worst of both worlds whereas the fully electronic system i rate but i know many of you will love and there'll be loads of comments they love the handbrake yeah there's a whole know, a handbrake appreciation society i think so right so we've got to the brakes we've done the brakes so you're already starting to get an idea oh this the doors do close nicely on this but they do need a bit of a thud 
see we've got all sorts um so we'll so that's the drive train then we'll get on to the we've already mentioned the chassis this is a ladder frame chassis now the chassis is not galvanized i kind of would have liked it galvanized we've put a galvanized chassis on our old defender because they're always rusting out um but apparently it's got some rust protection and apparently they've done it non-galvanized so it's easier to repair which i don't know of but anyway it's got the, the steel bodywork and i believe most of it is steel not aluminium we'll get the magnet out and check in a minute is galvanized so that i think they issued 12 it was a 12 year warranty then on the anti-perforation so a massive 12 year warranty but on the basic car i think it was a three year warranty which i think is the same as the land rover right the winds died down so what you look at some of the kia and that where they're offering crazy five and seven year warranties now um so one thing we have to remark remember is that ineos is a new car company it's a whole not only is it a new model the company in your sort of motive is new so there's new dealer networks who are sort of dealers and not dealers i don't know they're sort of support distributors whatever one thing you want to be thinking about is what is the support and the backup going to be like and we did a little test didn't we ben i'm waffling i'm going all over the place but we rang up ineos distribution partner whatever in gloucester and said um so hypothetically i've got an ineos my steel wheel i've just punctured i've just had a puncture look real life situation look i've had to drive on my rim which i did when i was off-roading and i need i need a new tire can you give me a price for a new tire i said it's just hypothetical i just want to know if i'm going to buy an ineos how quickly can i get a new wheel sorry um and he's like oh i'll have to look it up on the system now Ineos are claiming there's an online parts catalogue that we can all look at, but we couldn't find it anywhere for looking. And the dealer said, well, I'll have a look and I'll ring you back. And sure enough, an hour later, he did just ring me back. And he said, sorry, can't give you a price for a wheel because I've just got the circle of death on the Ineos parts website. So we've still got some teething problems there, um, but hopefully he's going to call me back. And apparently they'll get a wheel or a part to you if it's critical within 24 hours so i'm quite up for a challenge of ordering it starting the clock and seeing when we get a wheel for our ineos so right then oh look they got six studs ben they got more than me on my five stud right so the body works so let's have a look the body so as we're moving back so we've got the classic defender single barn door style which is the same as the original defender on the new ineos they've got this funky twin whoa optional extra storage so they put the spare wheel on the wrong way or the other way whichever way so that you've got the big cavity and this is an optional box there you go look for all your car cleanery but obviously to demount the spare wheel you're now going to have to open this take this off and get to the thing but you've actually got a twin door system here how do i open it ben ah so the little door opens first so thin people can enter first but if you've had a few more pies you're going to have to open the second door how do i open the second door ben oh here we go you've got a lever inside so when we looked at the prototypes we did wonder if this would be covered but this is quite exposed i don't personally like that it looks a little bit but the twin door system is good obviously if you're in a tight space you can open the one door and just put some stuff in and you have got i don't think we didn't bring a pallet with us and this car's brand new i don't really want to get it dirty but i think we can agree we would get a pallet in the back of that no problem here's an interesting thing we just looked at we said what happens if you shut the doors in the wrong order what would happen would this one crash into it but actually they've put these little rubber blocks there so that if you are silly enough to shut the doors in the wrong order it would catch the rubber box the ladder is also optional so this car is loaded up with loads of extra goodies so he was he's he's over eighty thousand pounds this one but he has got loads of goodies and we'll look at some of the goodies in a minute we've been trying to pick a faults with this not because i'm vindictive or nasty but because you want to look like what things could be improved where how do we gauge quality so one thing that we were looking at is some of the panels i mean you, it's a bit picky generally i've got to be honest but some of the things here look there's a little bit of a bow here and some of these bits of plastic here are a little bit sort of 
deformed and misshaped but generally the build quality and when you shut the doors they do shut shut nicely so this also this gas strut holds the door really well once you've positioned it it really does hold it quite well there we go so yeah so the ladder is optional there we go right where else we're going this bumper looks like plastic that is like a girder so again this isn't going to help its weight which isn't going to help its handling and its thingy and I, i'm not sure how they got it through crash testing because the whole of the front of the stig is is plastic but right okay so this car has got the optional utility rail apparently shh, don't tell anyone apparently he didn't order this but they haven't got the plastics for the non one so he got them chucked in for free which was a bonus the wheel arches are however plastic We've got the optional bigger wheels on here. Um, we've got obviously the utility rail covers down here. These are cool. So we have got the extra electric pack. And under here, if I don't break it, oh look, there's some, there's a 25 amp power outlet here, which you could use for a side lamp. Or if you had a roof tent, you could take the power. I'm a bit worried that's gonna fall off. Right, there you go. And you've got some little love handles here. Now obviously on some of the cars, they have the safari windows. But you, I guess you can't have the safari windows and power outlets. Are they mutually exclusive events? All right, let's have a look. So now, oh, the rear seats, this is interesting. So I'll flip the rear seats up for you. I'll join you around the other side. What you'll note here is we've got twin batteries. So this is a monster second battery here. And we've got a C-Tech. Now this is an option again. I think this is a thousand pound option, but not only do you get the twin batteries, you get the extra switches. And we'll have a look at the switches when we dive into the front. So this is where you get the extra power from. Now, on the Defender, one of our biggest problems is we were camping this weekend. We camped for one night in the morning. Flat battery warning. We need a camping mode. But this obviously means when you're parked up, it's going to suck all the battery. I should have brought my ammeter down and seen what the static power drain. Seats, they're Recaro. Now, Obviously, we were talking about back to basics, bare bones, four by four, leather, hand stitch, Recaro seats. Have they deviated? Where's the money? I mean, companies have to make money. And is, is it built for purpose or is it built for posing? This is the question I'd like to pose. Um, see what I did there, Ben. Now, it's interesting. Ineos, one of the first companies they've lent this vehicle to is Urban Automotive. We are big fans of Urban Automotive. They do some great, stunning, styling, cosmetic upgrades for the Land Rover Defender and the Volkswagens and other vehicles. But it seemed a strange choice for a vehicle that's like built on purpose and its credibility was supposed to be on its utilitarian value. It seemed a strange choice, although I respect Urban, nothing against Simon and Lenny. Um, but it was just an interesting choice. Are they trying to maybe, are their marketing team trying to chase the cosmetic London sort of city dweller? Don't know. You tell me, tell me in the comments. Am I out of order? Right, oh, I won't, I'll let him put this back. I don't want to mess up his nice car. But there you go. But this is a good use of space. On our new Defender, this space is wasted. They're, if I look under the seat, you'll see in my videos where I've stripped it out. This isn't available. Right, should we have a smooch in the back, Ben? Oh, look at all this. This all looks a bit... No map pocket, though, Ben. Now, I know we don't have maps anymore and all that, but you'd have thought they'd have given us something a bit more utilitarian there to put things in. Right, let's jump in the front. Now, one thing you'll notice, Ben, is check out that black gloss trim on the door where you are. That is going to get scratched to poop them. Surely, can you imagine? You've just gone off-road, you've got your gloves on, you've been doing whatever. That is, that ain't gonna last two minutes in my car. Right, we have got the optional sort of sky windows, which are quite novel, they're quite funky, aren't they? And you can see up and look up there. And you've got this awesome control panel overhead fighter jet style panel, which has been one of their design cues from the start. I think that's pretty cool, actually, I think. And one thing we will say about Ineos and the Grenadier, I might say little things against it. I'm just trying to be honest, my, my personal opinion. But it does give people choice. The more choice, choice is always a good thing. It creates competition, it creates innovation. 
you, you know, if we only had the choice from a larder, we saw what that did in the old Soviet times. It didn't really lead to much innovation and choice. So here we go. We've got all sorts of, I guess this is the controller for the audio system. Again, I'm not driving this today. Um, the guy's pretty clever and doesn't want me driving it. Come on, fault him for that. You've got cup holder. We've got some, some gadgetry in the back. This all looks fairly standard. Lockable. They make a big thing about the lock. You, that would take some fiddling to get a key in there, I reckon. But there we go. You've got all your controls on here. You've got the very BMW-looking gear knob. Yes, I'll feature the handbrake again, Ben, for the, for the handbrake Appreciation Society members. Get that in. Then you've got this sort of, here's your manual sort of scent a diff lock and your high and low ratio box and that feels like it's pretty much a mechanical link so there we go so it's automatic only available in automatic um we have got the we got the two horns that's the first horn see so we've got a little bicycle please get out my way horn and the big like aggressive horn so there we go we've got we've got an infotainment system we've got lots of electronics we've got the compass that was extra wasn't it Ben, am I, are we spinning round? What, what, what happened there? I'm not sure. Not sure, we just did a whole 360 spin. That was weird, maybe it's the camera. Maybe it's you, Ben, maybe it's your magnetic personality. <laughs> Don't know, that was spinning. Right, let me check my notes, check we've cut everything, and then I think we better wrap up and let this guy get on with his day. Uh, one thing we wanted to look for, we got all these switches and all these dials, but we couldn't find a USB port. Now, what would have been really cool was the USB port up here. To wire in your dash cam we've sold a lot of those dash cam leads to the defender but there are apparently some usb a and c in a sort of slightly uh, unergonomic we can't even get the camera in there to film now having one in there would have been good all for that but i think it, it kind of needs one somewhere else as well but you'll notice you've got rubber floor mats which is good we've got the carpets in here which is an upgrade so it does have quite a utilitarian feel in terms of the rubber carpeting and matting right we've got the key we can't move it but we can start it look we've got manual seats now i actually love the manual seats in the stig the electric seats in the 90 so we'll give you a little start up for you oh where's the key ben i've i've failed at the first hurdle oh it's sort of in the it's sort of in the dash so we haven't got wireless start we've got some sort of key well look we've got a lot of warning lights let's hope they go out blimey that is a can you see that, Ben? <laughs> okay, okay we've got, we got some warning lights on. Right, how do we start it then? I reckon just turn it, don't you? There you go, there it goes, it starts. Is the engine light gonna go out? The engine light's gonna go out. We got no seat belts. Here's the infotainment screen. There we go, so we've got, we've got a manual, you've got a manual mode. There's no paddle shifts. We've got a manual mode on the gearbox where I guess we can sort of thump it forwards and backwards if we need to. Normal conventional stalk controls, heat in, everything. You'll have to work it out. It, is it a bit confusing? It's not too bad. We've got, we got a lot of stuff going on. We've got heated seats, which again, it's, it's not paired back, but let's bear in mind, I will emphasize this one is the Trail Master. Was that right, Ben? I think so. Yeah. Um, Field Master. Field Master, I think you're right. Field Master. And it came with a free bell staff jacket apparently it's named after the field master jacket um, and apparently you get a free wax jacket with this one so right thank you very much to the person that lent me this car for letting me have a crawl over it we will try and get one now one thing i did challenge ineos the other day i said look we're going on the strata florida come and join us come out lend me one i'll, I'll go out we we're going out with some old defenders and they didn't reply to me so yeah they're kind of i'm sure they're busy they've got more important things to do but if an ineos or anyone with an ineos is up for a day out off-roading give us a shout we'll meet at your place and and we'll, we'll have some fun and we'll take the stick and and we'll see if we can damage two very expensive or break two very expensive cars um but that's all part of the fun right i hope you've enjoyed that have a good weekend and hopefully right will we i uh, thank you also to someone who's offered to lend me their ineos while he's on holiday which is very kind different person to this we're not sure whether we are gonna do parts for the ineos commercially 
it's a tricky one because I think they can only sell some like 6,000 in the UK because they're, they're doing it because they haven't got an, a, an electric vehicle to offset their emissions. I think they're limited how many vehicles they can sell, limited to about 6,000. So I've got to think. But then again, I do think it will attract people who do want to do things to their vehicle and the vehicle has been in part designed to do that. But I'm, I'm still not sure. And I don't think I'm going to be buying one. I'm still a fan of the lightweight modern materials and the modern tech used on the Defender. And I know that comes with a risk with air suspension, but on the Defender, I can lift the air suspension. This one's on coils, by the way. So it can't go up and down and change ride height and stiffen suspension and active dampers and all that stuff, which I quite like. But there you go, that's enough of my, my opinion. Um, the school buses are leaving now, so I will let you get on with your weekend. Have fun.